This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. Last day we have already started uh, different types of theory uh, for explaining the coordination compounds and the first theory, which is Weiner's theory that we have done already. Now the second one, which is uh, valence bond theory, uh, there are some assumptions that we have in case of Weiner and some limitations that we cannot explain on the basis of only Weiner's theory, but that some of the limitations we can overcome in the next theory, which is valence bond theory. Fine. So in today's discussion, there will be all about valence bond theories related discussion. And after that, there will be some problems and also application of this theory. Here in this table, we have in the left hand side column, different types of coordination number. So coordination number means number of atoms, molecules, or ions surrounding the central metal atom and the corresponding hybridization. That means if you know the coordination number, you'll be able to understand what is the hybridization. Then geometry, depending on hybridization, what will be the geometry and the corresponding example. So when it is coordination number two, that is the minimum possibility. Here, hybridization is SP. Now it is very easy to remember that when it is 2, it will be sp or when it is 3, when it is sp3, sp2. Because when I'm saying coordination number 2, basically it is uh, what we require. We require two hybrid orbitals. Now when we have sp hybridization, that means we have 1s, 1p, and then we are hybridizing. We are getting two new sp orbital. So coordination number 2 means two at orbital you need. And that is possible only from SP. But suppose if it is coordination number three, and if you, it is hybridization SP, it is not possible. So now three means there must be three hybrid orbital. So see SP2 means one S and two P. S, P, P, you are combining, now you are getting three SP. So in this way, you can easily remember. But sometimes you will see that under same coordination number, you can have two alternative hybridization. And that is the uh, case where you have to properly write the electronic configuration of the central metal atom. And depending on the ligand nature, we can have either tetrahedral or square pair. Not just it is dependent on the ligand nature, it is also dependent on the metals, what type of metals are there and also sometimes the oxidation state of the metal. So when it is coordination number four, you need four hybrid orbital and that is possible. If it is sp3, that means 1s and t3p combining together, now you have total four sp3. And if it another possibility is 1d, 1s and 2p. So combining all this, you can get four new dsp2 hybrid orbital. Look at the examples when it is linear geometry because higher coordination number two means two side there will be just two atoms or ions or ligand. Then example we have copper associated with two Cl and uh, Ag attached with two Cl. Then for triagonal planar which is sp2 Ag I3 minus for sp3 tetrahedral very common example is nickel tetracarbonyl and nickel tetrachloride. When it is DSP2, platinum complexes, you will see uh, under square planar uh, category, platinum complexes are very important because for platinum, when it is coordination number four, you will always get square planar geometry, fine? So nickel CN42 minus PTNS3 whole four. Then coordination number five. Coordination number five, uh, here we have DSP3. But when we are saying triagonal bipyramidal, another hybridization also comes in our mind, which is, remember, SP2D. And this type of uh, hybridization you can see in case of inorganic compounds. But when it is coordination chemistry it, and it is triagonal bipyramidal, that is, you need four coordination sites. So it is mainly DSP3 most of the time. And one important information, if it, it can be asked, that in DSP3, the single D orbital that is used, it is what type of D? So it is D X square Y square type of D. Example, FeCO5. 
though it is true that we are uh, we are discussing coordination number all possibilities but mainly when it is coordination compounds you will see two geometry the most common one is four coordination another one is six coordination okay two three uh, five these three are comparatively less common when it is six d2 sp3 another possibility sp3 d2 now when it is d2 sp3 then also octahedral when it is sp3 d2 then also octahedral but there is a difference and that we are going to discuss in detail and under this category d2 sp3 which is also known as inner orbital complex uh, these are the examples why it is inner orbital and why sp3 d2 outer orbital that we'll discuss in the another slide fine right now just see two possibilities are there when it is coordination number six so when it is octahedral complex suppose there is a principal quantum number n that is simply take the first transition series so after argon what we have configuration 3d and 4s so here principal quantum number is 4 that means n value is 4 that means n minus 1 value will be 3 so if 3d orbital is used that is i'm trying to say if n minus 1 d orbitals are involved in hybridization then you can call it inner orbital complex sometimes other names are also used low spin complex or spin paired complex but if nd orbital is used that means after 4ns you also have 4p you have 4d now if you are using 4d that means you are using nd orbital same principal quantum number not n minus 1 n minus 1 is 3 n is 4 so if that is the case now you will call it outer orbital or i spin or spin p so outer orbital is basically this type sp3 d2 fine the hybridized orbitals they are uh, having some directional nature now this directional nature you cannot explain in case of Werner's theory but now you can do so and their uh, orientation in space it gives a definite geometry to the complex pile. okay so that is why there is a separate column we are discussing geometry so separate uh, that is definite geometry will be present depending on what type of coordination is there and what type of coordination that is also dependent on the type of hybridization so hybrid orbitals whenever you have because in uh, this geometry when we are discussing it is never any pure a s or p or p or d orbitals are used. it is always some hybrid orbitals that you use and all whenever it is hybrid it is having some directional nature so that is why now there is a definite geometry fine so in this table all this coordination number the corresponding hybridization and geometry is there any doubt next so in Bellesburg theory the complexes containing a central metal atom and there will be some unpaired electrons now if central metal atom it is having unpaired electrons it will be paramagnetic even just presence of one electron is enough to call it paramagnetic okay now unpaired electron number may vary two three four five whatever it is but if it is present even at least one it you can call it paramagnetic but if there is no such unpaired electron for example if it is zero then you have to call it diamagnetic now the number of unpaired electrons in the complex it will basically determine the geometry of the complex and also the hybridization of the central metal ion and vice versa that means if you know the hybridization you can understand how many unpaired electrons are there if you know the geometry you will be having some idea about the number of unpaired electrons and vice versa if you know the number of unpaired electrons then also you can get the idea of what will be the hybridization and uh, questions related to this very common so suppose some hybridization will be given and you will be asking uh, that uh, how many number of unpaired electrons are there in practice number of unpaired electrons in a complex is found from magnetic moment measurement now magnetic moment measurement means mu spin only value so mu spin only value the formula is n into n plus 2 
by n is number of unpaired electron so if n value is known you can calculate use mu spin only if mu spin only is known you can calculate n value fine so when you know the number of n value basically you know how many number of unpaired electrons are present under the influence of strong ligand ligands can be two types now in vbt uh, mostly the strong field ligand and weak field ligand you will first get the idea but details of it you can get it mostly in other theory which is cft theory so strong ligand and weak ligand how you will be able to understand which one is strong and which one is weak that you can get the idea about from the spectrochemical series so there is a series from which you will be uh, able to understand because there at one end there is all the strong field ligands at the other end there is all the weak field ligands fine so strong field ligand when present the metal ligand interaction that will be uh, very inter intensity is very high okay but if it is weak field ligand then metal ligand interaction is not so strong fine and remember when it is strong field ligand present pairing of electrons occur and if it is weak field ligand then pairing is not so important now some common examples under weak field ligand is cl then any halogen actually not just cl br also then what are fine so these uh, examples uh, type of ligands are very common and if it is strong field ligand then cn is very common carbonyl is very common okay so remember these are some examples though the complete list you can get from spectrochemical series which is easily available in any books fine now the electrons will be forced to pair up when strong field ligands are present and this type of pairing up forced pairing up that is actually against hund's rule hund's rule from hund's rule what we do first we place one one electron single electron in all the orbitals and once you are done with that you no more have any vacant orbital then only now you are bound to do pairing that is according to hund's rule but suppose even if there is presence of vacant orbital but still you are doing some pairing and this is because of the strong field ligand so that is why it is against hund's rule now greater is the overlapping between the ligand orbital and the hybridized metal orbital greater will be the bond strength and that is easily you can understand fine now the most important thing that is the application of this theory on coordination complexes so what we will do we will take some uh, examples under different category so suppose uh, with coordination number 4 coordination number 6 then under coordination number 6 two types possible outer orbital inner orbital and when it is coordination number 4 you can have either sp3 or dsp2 that is tetrahedral or square hedral so all these possibilities we will try to explore here so first it is coordination number 4 when it is 4 obviously it is tetra coordinate right and it may be either tetrahedral or square planar and that depends on the nature of orbitals involved in hybridization because say different hybridization different geometry now when it is dsp2 basically geometry square planar then what are the orbitals that are involved here n minus 1d involved ns involved and 2np involved now n minus 1 means Uh, one value less than the principal quantum number so if it is 4s 4p then n minus 1d means is 3d so you are taking 1 3d 4s there is only one and you are taking 2 4p and then you are combining what hybridization you will get dsp2 but the second one that is sp3 which means state idle geometry now you do not have any d So in this case, what you are doing, you are simply taking 4s, 1 4s, and 4p. There is only three maximum. Fine. In this case, it is one. This is obviously one, and this is two. Yes, but this is one and three. So, tetra coordinated complexes. You will see that they are common with uh, nickel, copper, Pt, Pt, platinum, palladium. All are in plus two oxidation state. Okay, so this 
metals they in plus two oxidation state they can uh, give data coordinated complex so the first type that is dsp so n minus one d it is though i am showing you the example of 4s and 4p that is when n value is 4 but it is not necessary n value will be 5 for the second transition series n value will be 6 for the next transition series and when it is in uh, 5 that means it is 5s 5p and n minus 1d that means 4d when it is 6s 6p n minus 1d that means 5d fine depending on uh, which transition series you are talking about though mostly it is first transition series but still see if you are taking pt or pd they are not from first transition series right so n minus 1d we are taking 1d 1ns and 2np you are getting now new four new dsp2 hybrid orbitals and square planar geometry now this four dsp2 one dsp2 second dsp2 third dsp2 fourth dsp2 so maximum four you will get and all these are vacant so if there is ligand present ligand will donate electron to this dsp2 so never think that ligands are donating electron to p or s or p or p or p or t no it's not that like that it is donating electron to hybrid vacant orbit another possibility is now you have taken 1s and 3p you are getting four new sp3 so four new sp3 and they will have directional nature and the ligands are donating electron to this vacant sp3 fine so any doubt here difference between square planar and tetrahedral i hope it is clear now sometimes you will see that ds uh, if you want uh, that is we are having dsp2 geometry that means this d orbital must be vacant but suppose if you have do not have this vacant then obviously you are bound to do sp3 right so these are different possibilities and sometimes it may happen that here you are having one d orbital vacant or it may be the two d orbital vacant then also fine but at least one d must be vacant if you want to get dsp2 hybrid orbitals so whenever any complex will be given and it will be asked that try to find out the hybridization whether it is dsp2 or tetrahedral what you have to do first first you have to write the electronic configuration of the central metal atom and you have to check what type of ligands are there is it strong field is it weak field then sometimes oxidation state of metal also uh, important because if oxidation state of the metal is very very high that means it is highly electron deficient okay just take two examples suppose one metal it is in two plus state another metal it is in four plus state so obviously it is more electron deficient so it is it that is the interaction between this high oxidation state central metal atom and the ligand obviously it will be very high because now it is highly electron deficient so sometimes oxidation state of the metal also very important to decide whether the interaction with ligand is very strong or not okay and another thing we already discussed that is the nature of ligand whether it is strong field ligand then also interaction is very strong and if it is weak field ligand like water or halogen then interaction will be very weak fine now here uh, important information just take it as a note that square planar geometry it is a common observation that square planar geometry it is very common for transition metals where you will have d8 configuration and when you will have d8 configuration see this include all this so it is true we know that nickel 2 plus is d8 because for nickel electronic configuration is 3d8 4s2 after argon obviously now when it is nickel 2 plus means it is 4s0 you are left only with 8 electron in 3d but that is one first transition series and we are habituated to see those but suppose if it is from other transition series like gold palladium platinum iridium rhodium then in this type of oxidation state for these two it is plus two oxidation state for rhodium iridium 
when they are in class one state it is d8 configuration when gold is three it is d8 configuration like this okay so for all these system uh, square bond and geometry that is very common now we will take uh, examples one by one so first we will see this very common example which is nickel tetra carbonyl and it is tetrahedral that means there must be sp3 hybridization but we will see here why it is sp3 it is not that enough to know it is tetrahedral geometry you have to understand why it is tetrahedral okay so first try to find out the oxidation state and here oxidation state of nickel is zero because carbonyl it has no contribution towards charge and overall the molecule is neutral then nickel must have zero oxidation state fine now four ligands four carbon monoxide ligands are attached to central metal atom nickel so obviously you need four hybrid orbitals so that you can accommodate the electrons that are coming from co fine now nickel as it is zero oxidation state so this is the electronic configuration 3d8 4 is okay and I, as i have already said that co is strong field ligand okay so as it is strong ligand or strong field ligand now there will be pairing up of electrons and that is again holds true okay now see nickel atom it is 3d8 4s2 and 4p is vacant so when it is nickel uh, zero obviously this is the configuration but suppose for the sake of sp3 hybridization you have to uh, make 4s vacant then only you can do sp3 hybridization so for that purpose what we are getting here as co is present as strong field ligand so this type of pairing which is now these two electrons it will come here which is obviously against hans rule but it is against hans rule that we have already discussed and it is because of this strong field ligand so now you have 4s vacant and 4p is already vacant and you can have sp3 hybridization so though here in the picture it is uh, shown here that as if co is donating electron to as and 4p but don't think it is so the pictures are always drawn in this way but actually it is like this you are now having four separate sp3 it is not that your uh, co is donating uh, electrons towards vacant 4s or vacant 4p no it is not that so you will have totally completely new 4sp3 and co will donate electron to this and all the electrons that are coming from co that are denoted by cross sign okay so that you can try to understand the difference between the two electrons these electrons are electrons of metal but the cross sign electrons that are the electrons coming from the ligand okay so basically nickel is using 4sp3 hybrid orbital for bond formation with co so nickel is using all this sp3 with directional nature that is why it is tetrahedral so all this sp3 they are 109 degree angle to each other that is a standard angle we know for tetrahedral geometry okay and this complex you will not find any unpaired electron because all these elect 10 electrons basically all these eight and two all these electrons are now here you do not have any unpaired electron so it will be diamagnetic fine so just by drawing the electronic configuration you will be able to understand and obviously uh, after doing completing up to this stage now you can understand what will be the geometry what will be the hybridization whether there is any unpaired electron or not and its paramagnetic or diamagnetic nature so all this information you can get but you have to draw understand first what is the oxidation state of nickel what is that is the corresponding metal then what is the nature of the ligand is it strong field or weak field is there will be pairing according to that and after pairing the vacant orbitals that are available you have to do the hybridization according okay and then you will be able to understand what is the geometry and whether there is any unpaired electron present or not so is there any doubt in this complex and how we are having the tetrahedral geometry
is it fine next is again we have taken another nickel complex but now it is cyanoligate not carbon monoxide ligand this is also a tetra coordinated but now see it will be square pentane but we will obviously try to find out the reason why it is square pentane okay nickel here is having plus 2 oxidation state because outside charge is 2 minus and four cyano ligand means you have total negative charge inside the coordination sphere minus 4 so if x is the oxidation state it will be x minus 4 inside the coordination sphere total charge that is equal to minus 2 okay that means x will be 4 minus 2 that is plus 2 now when it is plus 2 state this will be the configuration because when it is zero it is 3d8 4d0 so if it is plus 2 obviously it will be 3d8 right and cyano ligand that is also strong field ligand so it can pair now come to the right hand side nickel at first it is 3d8 4s2 but when it is in plus 2 state now these two electrons are lost because we know that electrons are fast uh, lost from 4s not 3d now you have two unpaired electron okay but as cyano ligand is present and you need uh that is cyano ligand present means suppose if you are neglecting the nature of ligand what you will do there is a chance that you can do spt hybridization but here it is not spt hybridization you have to consider the nature of ligand it is strong field ligand so this electron it will uh, that is against hund's rule now it will come to this and now you have one d vacant so d s and 2 p so you are getting 4 sp2 dsp2 in this way and cyano is donating ligand to all this four separate dsp2 and it will have square pentane geometry because that is the geometry for dsp2 hybridization okay so four dsp2 hybrid orbitals are arranged in this manner and hence the geometry is square pentane so nickel is using four dsp2 like this and the angles between all this that is if you consider these two cyano the angle is 90 degree but if you are considering this cyano and this one now the angle is 180 degree so c strands uh, two uh, types though it is true that all the ligands are same so no question of c strands i am just saying that if it is divided ligand it is possible next thing is is there any unpaired electron no there is no unpaired electron so it will be again diamagnetic okay and this is also inner d orbital we are using so you can call it inner orbital though it is true that this star we mainly use for six coordination not for four coordination right so is it clear the previous complex nickel tetra carbonyl Where nickel is zero oxidation state and this one nickel tetra cyan. Where nickel having oxidation state plus two. Okay, because cyan is anionic ligand, not neutral like CO. Okay. Now another tetra coordinated complex we are going to see which is copper complex and here it is written special case so there must be some exception exceptional case okay though that is very rare but you should know it because if you get question and if you are simply applying the common logic you you will not reach the actual answer correct answer because some this special case or you can say exceptional case that are basically experimental based experiment based uh, it is not that always experimentally whatever information we get it will match with the theoretical explanation it's not always like that so this is a case which is very interesting we'll see here this complex is square pentane that is already uh, proved but why it is so that we have to see and square pentane means what do we know that it must be dsp2 right but here is the exception that is why it is interesting 
So property theta coordinate that is clear from the structure and it may exist n square planar and tetrahedral that until that we know that two only two possibilities. But physical measurement have indicated that tetrahedral geometry for this complex it is not possible. Okay, physical measurement that is completely experimental. Now, if it is not possible, only one alternative is left, and that is square planar geometry. It must be correct. But if it is square planar geometry, then what should be the electronic configuration or arrangement? See, so copper, it is 3D, 4S, and uh, 4P. Now ammonia is neutral outside charge is 2 plus that means this is plus 2 state right now copper when it is neutral what is the configuration configuration is Cu after argon 3d10 4s1 this is a configuration when it is ground state but when it is in plus 2 state now this electron removed one electron from 3d10 removed basically now it will be simply 3d10 3d9 which is clear see it is 3d9 total 9 but you need to remove this electron because we have already seen from physical measurement theta is geometry not possible that means you have to somehow make this d orbital vacant if you do not do so how you will get dsp now here also you cannot do any further pairing so the only option is just remove this that is transfer this to 4p now this type of thing you have not seen before this is the first time we are seeing right but we are bound to do so because if we do not do so dsp to hybridization we cannot get okay now for ammonia ligand see these ligands that are coming from ammonia sorry these electrons that are coming from ammonia they are shown with dotted line so that you can now differentiate so the electrons i am now coloring with blue so these electrons are basically coming from ammonia and this is electron of copper itself okay so now you can get the explanation that it must be dsp but here see some more things we have to know now suppose if this configuration is correct then there is unpaired electron present in 4p and it must be having very high energy because it is now in 4p it is if it is in 3d the, suppose the android electron is 3d and it is in 4p obviously when it is in 4p it will be more energy now if it is in 4p then you can expect that it should be expected to be easily lost what i am trying to say suppose an electron is already having very high energy so its removal will be very easy that means copper is already in two plus state you are removing this electron which is present in 4p because it is having very high energy you can easily get copper 3 plus right but it never occurs that means this configuration is not giving a satisfactory explanation now what to do in order to explain the stability and the square planar geometry but what we are saying that dsp2 not possible because 4p electron is very high but you have to somehow uh, give the explanation that why it is square planar. Then what to do? To explain the stability and square planar geometry of the complex, there is scientist Huggins, what he suggested is that the unpaired electron will remain in 3D orbital and 4S. 2, 4P and 1, 4D orbital will undergo hybridization. Okay? So it will remain in 3D, that is this single electron, it will remain here. But you will not have in that case any 3D available. So now you have to take D from 4D. Okay, so you are taking 4S, 2 from 4P and 1 from D. So further you have to draw the D orbital here which is 4D. Okay, so one of these D you have to take. But as it is now outer D you are taking, you are taking now ND. 
right? Not n minus one. So you have to write it sp two d, not dsp two. Okay. So it is not sp three. It is not dsp two. Though we know these two are the possibility, but is it? It is a special case, and here hybridization is sp two. So is this clear? Because this is completely different. So you must understand it properly. Is there any doubt? Now after four, we will see what about hexa coordination. So when it is hexa coordination, two types are possibilities are there: inner orbital, outer orbital. Inner orbital is uh, d two sp three, and outer orbital is sp three d two. So when it is inner orbital, in this type of complex, we use n minus one d orbital, right? That means if it is four s, principal quantum number four, n minus one d will be three d. Because n minus one is four minus one three. Complexes formed by using inner orbitals, they are diamagnetic. Mostly you will see they are diamagnetic. Though in some cases this may not be, and but obviously as some uh, you have to make available three D or n minus one D. So obviously you have to do some pairing. And when you are doing pairing, basically you are decreasing the number of unpaired electrons. So there will be now reduced paramagnetism and increased diamagnetism. They are also known as low spin or spin paired complex. So example, we have taken this particular iron cyano complex. So in this iron cyano complex, what is the oxidation state of iron? Here we have suppose if it is x, x minus. Or I can write it like minus one into six for each cyano. So, so x is plus two, right? So iron having atomic number twenty six is electronic configuration. When it is zero oxidation state after argon three d six four s two because argon atomic number is eighteen and here it is twenty six. That means eight more electrons. So it is three d six four s two. But when it is in Fe two plus state, now it will be. It has already lost this two. Now it is simply 3d6, and 3d6 you can write, you can place all the electrons like this. But you have to, as cyano is strong field ligand. So here you will expect inner orbital complex, and when it is inner orbital complex, we need this hybridization d2sp3, and d2sp3 means you have to have some available 3d orbital. Right, and for that, what we'll do? We will do pairing. These two electrons will be now paired, and now all these six electrons are like this, and now these two are available. Right? So D two S P three is possible. D two S P three. So now F E two plus it will undergo D two S P three hybridization so that it can get six new D two sp three hybrid orbital, and each of these six D two sp three orbitals that will accept electron pair that will be donated by CN cyano. And as we do not have any unpaired electron, then you have to call it diamagnetic. But remember, suppose if it is not a p, if just think about the previous uh, compound which is Mn. So if it is Mn, then in case of Mn, which is the previous atomic number 25. Now what will have? You will have two unpaired electron and one un, two paired electron, one unpaired. So in that case, though it is in our orbital, but still it is not diamagnetic. So most of the time, better I write it here. Mostly, not always. So mostly it is diamagnetic. Remember. As you are doing forceful pairing, so obviously paramagnetism is you are reducing paramagnetism, you are increasing diamagnetism. But that doesn't mean it always has to be diamagnetic. That may depend on the number of electrons of the metal. That is the nature of the metal. So if it is iron, it is true that it is inner orbital as well as diamagnetic. But if if you have taken a man, then it will be diamagnetic, but not sorry. If you have taken a man, it will be inner orbital, but not necessarily diamagnetic. Okay, so is this clear? 
so after uh, seeing inner orbital example next we have to see outer orbital example any doubt now in this case we have chromium ammonia complex and this this is also d2sp3 we are seeing actually two examples under this category ammonia is neutral so whatever charge you are seeing outside the coordination sphere that is actually directly the oxidation state of chromium chromium when it is neutral it has configuration 3d5 4s1 after the argon obviously because it has atomic number 24 and argon is 18 that means six more electron so 3d5 4s1 and for chromium atom it is 3d5 4s1 that is clear but when it is three plus oxidation state now three electrons lost 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 so you are now left with 300 electrons and these two are already vacant you don't need you don't have to do any pairing it is already vacant fine so D2SP3 hybridization, now you will be getting total six new D2SP3 where all these six ammonia will donate electron. So see here it is uh, D2SP3 hybridization and it is leading to ge octahedral geometry. That is fine, which is clear in this picture also. Since the complex has the unpaired electron is paramagnetic. So what I have just said, that it is not always necessary that if it is in an orbital, it has to be diamagnetic, it may be paramagnetic also. Other complexes of chromium with similar inner structure, that is same type of observation you can also get for CrCn63 minus and CrH2O whole 63 minus. Now this is exactly same as CrNH3 whole 60 plus because water is neutral, ammonia is also neutral. But when it is CrCn6, now basically chromium is having Plus three oxidation state, uh, six cyano ligand, six negative charge. It is neutralizing three positive charge, so three negative charge that will be left outside. So that is why now it is three minus outside. But whatever it is, as long as chromium is having uh, three oxidation, sorry, plus three oxidation state, so it will always be like this type of configuration, and you will always have d orbital vacant. So see here irrespective of the nature of ligand that is water is weak field ligand but still it is giving inner orbital complex okay then chromium uh, cn is uh, strong field ligand but here pairing is not required because already two uh, orbitals it is already vacant and even if you have taken water there also already two electrons are vacant because number of electrons for chromium when it is plus three state it is already only three electrons three fine so don't try to reach any correlation that if it is inner it will be always with uh, cyano that is strong field if it is inner orbital it will always be diamagnetic no no such thing is there you just have to write the electronic configuration and just check whether pairing is possible or not just for in this case, you can see that even we don't have to pair, do any pairing, it is already available, right? So this example is very good to understand that, that in our orbital it may be paramagnetic also. Any doubt in this particular example? Now when it is outer orbital, S, P, D orbitals which are involved in hybridization all are belonging to the highest quantum number that is principal quantum number A, outermost. So that is it is NS, NP, ND, not N minus 1D. This is also known as high spin complex or spin free complex. Some other examples are, all these are given here. So you can apply the same explanation that we are going to do now for all these complexes also. So the complex that we have taken is cobalt complex, but you can also practice with all these problems based on the particularly this example. Cobalt is having oxidation state plus three here because F is anionic. Outside there is three negative charge. Now cobalt atomic number is 27. That means after argon, which is having atomic number 18, nine more electrons 
so it is basically 3d9 4s2 sorry 3d7 4s2 which you can see here 3d7 4s2 but 4p 4d these are also available now when cobalt is 3 plus state three electrons will be lost so first electron lost from 4s and then this electron is also lost okay sorry it will not be there we can now sp3 uh, d2 hybridized orbital we will get how we are getting so because it is 1s 3p and 2d but it is from 4d because here af is not strong field ligand it is weak field ligand so pairing is not possible as pairing is not possible you are not getting any d orbital from 3d so you have to take the help of 4d now cof63 minus it is also known as high spin complex because we are not having any pairing and all these electrons that you are seeing these are basically coming from f so f minus is donating all these electrons 6f total 12 electrons for each f it is 2 electrons 6f 12 electrons fine now see look at this configuration you have can you tell me how many unpaired electrons are there in this that is just after finishing all the hybridization process how many unpaired electrons are there it is 4 1 2 3 4 that means it will be paramagnetic so as it possesses four unpaired electron it is paramagnetic and mu spin only value that is magnetic moment based on spin only value it will be 4 into 4 plus 2 now for calculation of this it is not always that you have to use calculator because 4 plus 2 means 6 and 6 into 4 it is 24 now we know that when it is 25 root it is 5 so when it is root 24 it must be slightly lesser than 5 so suppose if you have options uh 4.899 or another case is 5. Point, suppose you have four options one is 4.89 another one is 5.1 another one is 3. Point something so obviously we choose this because it is slightly lesser than 5 so it cannot be greater than 5 that is 5.1 not possible and it is not even equal to 3 because 3 means it is very less it is slightly lesser than 5 so without taking the help of calculator also you can easily choose which option is correct if you want to save time okay so remember this and it is paramagnetic paramagnetic because of four unpaired electrons okay it is not just paramagnetic there are four unpaired electrons so it may be asked that how many unpaired electrons are there it may be asked that what is its magnetic nature is it better or dire like this all these different types of questions may arise and my suggestion will be just practice this same thing with all these complexes that are given here as example. Okay, the more you will practice, it will help you to understand. Though we are discussing so many examples, but still there is some limitation even in balance bond theory. So it's true that it can explain the inform uh, the formation structure and magnetic behavior of formation complex that we have already seen to a large extent but that doesn't mean it will not have any limitation obviously it has some limitations first of all there are a number of assumptions okay here the metal ligand bond nature that we have considered we have always considered that it is completely uh, coordinate covalent bond that is ligand is donating electron towards metal we never have given any ionic nature included that we have not never uh, have taken the idea that it may be ionic also it is always based on the assumption that it is always coordinate covalent okay it fails to provide quantitative interpretation of magnetic data quantitative interpretation not qualitative it lacks expansion to the color exhibited by coordination compound so you will see we have never talked about any color so why there is some specific color for any specific coordination complex that cannot be explained by PBT. It doesn't provide quantitative interpretation of the thermodynamic or kinetic stabilities. That is why some particular compound is thermodynamically stable or 
kinetically stable because stability can be two types right so all this information also we cannot get it is unable to predict tetrahedral and square planar structure of four coordinate complex accurately that is if it is given four coordination directly there is no such rule based on which you can decide whether it will be tetrahedral or square plane. okay this theory doesn't distinguish between weak and strong field ligand in compounds that is not possible also in this case. so all these limitations you can over, uh, overcome by applying the next theory which is uh, comparatively modern theory with respect to dvt and that is cft now here we have a question which is based on dvt which of the following is correct for this complex mn cn6 3 minus so first thing that you have to understand here coordination number is 6 so it cannot be square planar this option cannot be correct now you are this is also not correct tetrahedral not possible square planar not possible these two are octahedral so it must be any one of these two so this is common for both option b and c only difference is one is inner orbital another one is outer orbital so first what you'll do you will write the configuration after argon atomic number 18 manganese is 25 that means seven more electrons you need so it will be 3d5 4s2 now oxidation state of mn is here plus 3 which you can calculate because outside charge is minus 3 and you have four cyano ligand so it must be plus 3 now when it is 3d5 4s2 and when it is mn3 plus so it will have only four electron left in 3d okay So four electron left in 3D. Here it is written. It is now 3D4 only after argon. So if it is 3D4 and cyano ligand is present, so pairing you have to do. But pairing just that is first write 3D4. If it is simply 3D4, okay. Now you need 2D. So for that you have to shift this electron here so one pairing is enough you don't have to pair these two we just need 2d here so now it is d2sp3 so inner orbital complex now d2sp3 means option c is correct not sp3 d2 and some more information is also there if it is asked that whether it will be paramagnetic or not yes it is paramagnetic because you have two unpaired electron and the value of this mu spin is root over two into because n value is two so 2 into 2 plus 2 that is root 8 so see root 9 is 3 so root 8 it is slightly lesser than 3 always try to calculate in this way so you don't need it will not be need, needing any calculator okay 2.87 bore magneton that is the new spin only value here so is there any doubt in this particular question Now crystal field theory which is completely different theory and uh, it is it can overcome some of the limitations of dvt i am not starting it today because it is completely separate topic okay that will start in the next class so in today's class as we are finishing here if you have any doubt regarding any slide or any concept please mention any uh, coordination complex if you have any doubt please ask me because we have some time left so as there is no doubt we are ending the session here thank you for this no doubt